All right, all right. LDW MMAC, this is your boy Coach Shelton Harrison. You're live, live, live on the Coach Shelton Harrison Combat Sports Show Live. <sighs> boy, the truth just keeps coming out, don't it? You know, you can take the truth, you can bury it, you can lock it away. But I tell you, the truth always come back. Y'all ever know, like, you know, somebody who was killed years and years ago, and the person tried to cover it up, and then, you know, you got these investigators, these forensic scientists, they, they end up finding out the truth. And then the person, years later, 20, 30 years later, they get arrested. See, eventually, it don't matter what you do, the truth always comes to light. It may take a long time, but the truth is going to come to light. And, you know, Chris Cyborg did, you know, an interview with Ari Hawani yesterday. And, um, you know, now, as everything begins to come into play, now we begin to understand just what the UFC is up to. See, now we know. We know without a shadow of a doubt. And see, people were saying, well, Chris was offered to fight, you know, but Chris turned down the conditions. Okay. So let's think about this. What were the conditions? Chris Cyborg was offered a six-fight contract. And, you know, probably in your head you're thinking, man, that's good. Chris should have took that. I would agree. Yeah, Chris should have took that. But what Chris and Cyborg indicated is that it was a six-fight deal fighting once a year. Now, I don't know about you, but nobody in their right damn mind is going to do that fighting once a year. Chris Cyborg is 34 years old, okay? The problem with that is Chris Cyborg isn't going to be in the game till she's 40. We got roughly two or three more years of Chris Cyborg, and that's it. Chris Cyborg not going to be in the game till she's 40. Chris Cyborg done already been in the game for damn near three decades, okay? No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm lying. Chris Cyborg done been in the game for, what, 22 years? Okay, and by the time uh, six years happened, Chris Cyborg would have been in the game for three decades probably. Okay, somewhere close to that, maybe 28 years in the game. Chris Cyborg don't want to be there that long. She don't want to be here till she's 40. I mean, it's just, it's what it is. See, people like Marion Reynaud, they started very late. Marion Reynaud don't even have a whole decade in the game. She don't have a decade. So, of course, for her, it's different. But for Chris Cyborg, who's got, what, 22 years in the game, that's a long time to be doing something that you love, but it's a long time to be going in there and, and fighting. It, it just is. Now, you could also argue that Chris Cyborg hadn't taken the punishment as much as everybody else because Chris has always gotten stoppages and knockouts. But still, man, I don't care who you are. I don't care how indestructible you are. Every fight you take, you get hurt. Okay, just about every single time you get in the octagon, you're going to get hurt. Even fights that you win decisively, I've seen fighters go in there and dominate fights and they still injure. Because this, the nature of this sport is as brutal, you're getting brutalized. Okay, lasting, you know, 20 plus years in MMA is hard to do. You've only got a handful of people that, that can actually do that. You've only got a handful of people that have done it. And Chris Cyborg being one of those people to last, you know, 20 years in MMA. Amazing. Amazing. But you have to look at the, you know, the wear and tear in your body. And one fight every year for six years, or, or you know, one fight, six fights once a year, that's just stupid. Who's going to do that? Okay. Fighting once a year. Chris already said, I don't want to fight once a year. Maybe they would have said maybe, you know, two fights a year. I think Chris would have agreed to that. And then you have to end the thing of the money. She talked about the money. You know, the money wasn't right. <laughs> the money wasn't right. They weren't talking the right money, man, for this Nunez rematch. And, you know, man, I don't know about y'all. As a fight fan, yeah, you know, Chris want to fight for legacy. But see, at this stage in Chris' career, you know, she got to cash out. She got to. Because you can't fight forever. She said this. You're going to lose. Eventually, you are going to lose. If you fight in MMA long enough, somebody's going to beat you. You will not be undefeated. And she said that, you know, I got to cash out. Because I got to think about my family. You know, she got a daughter now that she, you know, she's brought over here. And... You know, she has that to think about. And so, you know, you don't want to be in a fight. You want to get your last big payday and you want out the game. You want out of here. So you think about a six-fight contract once a year. That's not going to be conducive. That's not going to be conducive for Chris Cyborg to do what she got to do. Okay? And I understand that. I understand that at the business. I understand that. No fighter can survive fighting once a year. Even Chris Cyborg can't survive like they can't do that okay she's not going to even and i'm gonna tell you why the six fights one fight a year is more lucrative for the ufc i'm gonna tell you why that's that's good because chris cyborg may not even finish those six fights 
And so the UFC, they don't have to pay you. They don't pay you for fights that you don't do. You don't get paid to fight fights that you don't fight. That's just common sense. So Chris may not even ever finish those six fights. I mean, folks, you know, we got to think about that. I mean, we legit got to think about that. So who's really going to win in this situation? It's the UFC. But I tell y'all, man, I've never seen a more unprofessional organization in all my life. And the UFC is a billion-dollar industry, a billion-dollar corporation. And this is how they, they act unprofessional. I mean, you got the head honcho of the, of the corporation, you know, going around doing personal assaults on fighters. Like, what is that, man? Dana White need to go. He need to go. Like, they got to get him out of there. They need to do something. They need to pull somebody up. Look, promote Shannon App. Give somebody a Shannon App job. Promote Shannon App to either, you know, just deal with the women. Because clearly this guy don't know nothing. Don't know. He don't understand how to deal with them. He don't. Promote Shannon App. She'll do a good job. You know, promote somebody else within, man. But this guy got to go. This guy absolutely positively needs to go. The treatment of Justino, it's, it's, it's just, it's beyond disgusting the way she's being treated. And I think Chris, me, if it were me, I would look at what's out there and i go, okay? The first legit offer that I see, I get out of there. Um, but you know what, though? I'm going to be honest. The more that Dana White really dogs Chris Cyborg out is actually good. And I'm going to tell you why this is a good thing. See, the more that Chris is being dogged out, the more that she'll be worth to some other organization. So, see, Dana White, they, they don't even know that they're, they're helping Chris. They're helping Chris make more money. They're legit helping Chris make money. Okay? They're, they're helping her do more because they keep dogging out. And so then, therefore, these other organizations, they're going to want to offer Chris the money. They're going to want to make her happy. They're going to want to get her there because, see, then, then you, you have people like Scott Coker. They'll say, see, we can make Chris Cyborg happy. See, we can make her happy. We'll do what she needs because, see, you know, we're for the fighter. See, you'll see how stupid you are. See, you know, you, you know, how, you know how bad Scott Coker would love to say that. Do y'all know that? How bad he would just love to just sit back and laugh at Dana White and call him the fool that let Chris Cyborg get away. He would love that. Okay, well, you got PFL that's throwing around money all over the place, man. The Chris Cyborg fan base, we're going to follow Chris wherever she go. Okay? We're going to follow Chris wherever she go. Chris Cyborg go to Bellator, we're going to Bellator. Chris Cyborg go to PFL, we're going to PFL. Chris Cyborg go to one championship, we're going to one championship. That's where we're going. Okay? That's where we're going to be. Hands down, don't matter. We'll be there. Because we know, and Dana know Chris got a fan base. Scott Coker know Chris got a fan base. Please. I mean, even on bad pay-per-view nights, Chris Cyborg can probably swing around 200000 That's just on a bad night. And you better believe that Scott Coker, the zone, they want Chris Cyborg because they know that the fan base, we're going to get the zone. If Chris Cyborg goes to uh, Bellator, guess what? I have the zone. You better believe I will renew my the zone description. I won't even think twice about it. I will have the zone. Okay? And see, I, and I know if this is me as a fan, as a Chris Cyborg fan saying this, then think about the other 200, three, you know, like millions. Actually, Chris Cyborg got like a million followers, man, on Instagram. But, you know, all of those people are not going to buy pay-per-view. You probably have to say maybe a quarter of a million of those people, they'll buy pay-per-view. So if you think those 250,000 people won't buy the pay-per-view or get the zone, you're crazy. Chris Cyborg by herself can bring about 200, 250,000 more people to the zone right now. I know I'll get my DAZN membership. I, 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 I'll get it. I'll pay for it. Don't care. I'll definitely pay. To watch Chris, I sure will. It is what it is. I mean, I already, I bought DAZN. I got DAZN for a month. And, uh, you know, when Cindy Dandois went to DAZN, when she went to DAZN to do a fight, guess what? I bought it. I bought it. And, I'm, and I'll probably get it again when Denise Killholz, when she fight. I'll be going again. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. But it's the amount of hate that this woman is getting. You know, she's being overly criticized for, for dominating the fight. And yes, TJ347, you're right. Chris Cyborg needed a knockout. She needed to knock this girl out. She needed to knock out Spencer. And it don't even matter. Even if Chris would have knocked Spencer out in the third round, that still wouldn't have been enough. Okay? Uh, Chris Cyborg needed a fast knockout. Like, I'm talking about a 20-second knockout for this Nunez fight to be a reality. Unfortunately, dominating Spencer for three rounds, it's not going to get it.
because because she's Chris Cyborg. See, had that have been somebody else, had that have been any other fighter, okay, if it had been Bojangle check, she'd have got the rematch. Well, hell, Joanna Yo already got a rematch, and Joanna got knocked out. Joanna <laughs> got knocked out very fast. She got a rematch. But there's a bias. Chris Cyborg is not going to be loved, y'all. And we just got to go ahead and just get used to that. Chris Cyborg is never going to be loved. She's just not a person that the UFC just, they don't. And it's a shame that this is what it's come to. This is what we already knew, though. We already knew this. We already understood this. But, you know, now seeing it and hearing it in real time, you know, it just kind of does something to me. You know, like, how disgusting can these people get? How biased can these people get? You know, what, 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 what else are they going to do and try to say about this woman to destroy this woman? And it's very it's evil. It's wicked as hell, man. But Dana White's a devil. That's the subject for a whole other video. The man's a devil, okay? Dana White done made a pact with the devil years ago. <laughs> Him and Satan, best friends, believe me. If I really told you what I knew about that, Dana, Dana and the devil, see, I can never put that out there. Though. I can't put it on YouTube. Definitely can't. Because too many of the minds can't handle what I know about Dana and the devil. Oh, but they got a real tight relationship. Huh. You And one you can say, uh, huh, a relationship that was sealed in blood. I feel bad for Chris Cyborg, man. I feel bad for it that she in this state, but there's always going to be sunshine at the end of this rainbow. At the end of the rainbow, there's going to be sunshine. There's going to be a pot of gold. See, the pot of gold is somebody out there. One of these organizations, they ready to pay top dollar for Chris Cyborg. They ready. They ready to do it. They ready to do it. And I'll tell you who I think it is. I think Scott Coker, coming this week, this week right here, I think Scott Coker going to make a play for Chris Cyborg. I think Scott Coker is going to give Chris Cyborg a bona fide offer that she can't say no to. And I'm thinking seven figures. Y'all heard me say it. I think Scott Coker going to come with money in hand and he's going to offer Chris seven figures. Coach Adamas told you. 